rant time. What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers? I'm trying to keep my voice down a little bit today because uh, there's a couple guys in here trying to sleep. If you haven't seen the last two videos, first of all, I know for a fact you are not a member of the hashtag AKG Notification Squad and that is just a damn shame. Secondly, I know you don't know about Brass Valley, which is the program that I've been putting on for the last yeah, week and a half roughly. Uh, I'm gonna explain that a little bit better if you're one of the people who doesn't know about it. But all of the guys fly home tomorrow and everybody's had a fantastic time. We've gotten a lot of work done. If you don't know what Brass Valley is, there's a video that explains it a little bit better that we're gonna link here in the description. But I'm going to get into a little bit why Brass Valley is unique, why nobody in the industry is doing it, and what the purpose is. <laughs> Actually talking about how we fulfilled it better than I thought. And we are definitely going to be doing this again. But first, I'm gonna sit down because I've been standing for a week and a half and my back hurts. What's up? So for those of you who don't know, I've been talking about this for a few months and I've been planning this for at least a year, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, Brass Valley is kind of a, it's a project that I came up with a little while ago because I saw something very wrong with the way that the gun industry did prototyping. Kind of at the time as an outsider looking in, but after being involved in it, I, it's, it's worse than I, I, I actually originally thought. And so I, I definitely feel strongly about the mission statement behind it. And I'm going to dive into that right now. The idea behind Brass Valley is to take a small group of basically young engineering students, people who are super into guns, that do CAD work, that are really passionate about doing design stuff, and basically they just want to design things in the gun industry and make new stuff. I, 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 got, to, I got plenty of emails for starting out. As soon as I announced the AK-50 project, I got flooded with people who have ideas that are just really passionate. Some were good ideas, some were bad ideas, but the main theme behind it is that there are a lot of people that are very passionate about wanting to be involved in the gun industry but having no outlet to do it. And that is one of the things that I wanted to kind of go out there and fix. But there's kind of another side to it too. But take that small group and put them together in like an Airbnb house type thing where it just, it, it's kind of like a replica of a Silicon Valley incubator. If you don't know what that is, that's where a bunch of guys involved in a startup will all stay together in one house and they will just grind and they will work on the stuff and they, they kind of all thrive off the mutual environment that everybody there is there for one purpose and that's to just kind of grind it out and get what they're trying to do done. And it's a cool environment. That's how a lot of really cool companies got started. And honestly, it's an environment that I absolutely thrive in. And I know other people would too. So this was my take on that, getting them all together in one place and working on gun projects. So it, obviously the Brass Valley, Silicon Valley take off, but basically an incubator, a Silicon Valley style incubator for gun projects. Something I really thought would be pretty cool and there's a couple of reasons for that. The main thing that I see that is really kind of, it's hard to say wrong with the industry, but it's definitely I think a big opportunity. It's a big missed opportunity by a lot of big companies and it's, it's obvious why, but I really do think they're wrong and I think they could be doing this a lot better. And it's, it's something that the whole purpose of Brass Valley was to expose this one little gap in the market. So all of this started when I was looking for CAD work, uh, when I was working on, funny enough, early Project Huracan, which is one of the projects that we were kind of working really, really, really detailed on this week. And if you haven't heard of Project Huracan, it's because I haven't mentioned it in a while. Kind of a hot and cold project for me, not gonna lie. Kind of something that I really, really was passionate about. I don't get time to work on it often, so this was really, really fun. Getting sidetracked. The original CAD guy that I brought in to work on Huracan and some 50 stuff, he was, a, he was a pretty young guy, but he reached out to me. He had offered, you know, to help with CAD and things like that, and he was absolutely talented. He said, really, really, the guy had an amazing eye for cosmetics and things like that. He, he blew me away with what he was capable of, and he was only, I think, 16, 17 at the time, and he did some amazing, amazing work. And it was my experience with that that he had actually let loose a, a story about how uh, Long story short, bigger gun companies, even when he had an, a, a little bit of an in, like a mutual friend or something, wouldn't give him the time of day because he was so young. The basic, the, the, the de facto answer from big gun, gun companies is go to school, get an engineering degree, and when you've been in school to four to six years, 
give me a call and then maybe we can do an interview. And I think that is honest to God, pardon my French, so fucked up. So the overall purpose of Brass Valley was three, threefold really. The first purpose was to make some awesome content for you guys. Really, we filmed a lot this week. There was some cool stuff. We kind of, you know, played it up a little bit for you guys, kind of threw some stuff in there. Uh, got a lot of interviews with the guys and I think we're going to come out with some good content. We're even throwing around doing like a season one Brass Valley type thing. Maybe it's two episodes, maybe it's four episodes, but kind of a Mythbusters reality TV show type thing. I don't know what we're going to do with it yet, but I know it's going to be really fun. And so I'm excited to see how that turns out whenever we get around to editing that up and putting that up for you guys. The second reason for Brass Valley is to take a crew of guys like this who are competent, young, driven, and really would like to see themselves in a career in the gun industry, but they have no inroad to get there. To me, I, re I remember that. I remember being there. And I was a shithead at their level, really. I mean, in comparison, I have no business being where I'm being compared to where these kids are right now, where they're at. These kids are competent with, and I call them kids, some of them are only like a year or two younger than I am, but they're great at CAD, excellent mechanical thinkers, and, and really, I mean, they, 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 I cannot emphasize it enough, there are a lot of bright futures here, and I'm not just saying that to be nice. This was very fun to see, especially as an inaugural thing. I'll get more into that later, but giving them a shot to work on some real gun projects, something that's practical, applied skills that they have learned into the field that they would like to go into and potentially hook them up with a couple of gun companies along the way so that they can do what they actually want to do with their skills instead of a boring desk job that they're going to fucking kill themselves at. The third reason is more or less a takeaway from everyone, but especially if you're in the industry, holy hell, prototyping is over, it's just, it's bloated right now. There are big companies that are spending a lot of money prototyping things where they really don't have to. Prototyping in the 21st century can be cheap as shit if you're efficient and you're smart. We are not living in the age of Mikhail Kalashnikov and John Moses Browning anymore, okay? When you draw something out into paper, you don't have to sit there and then just draw out all the dimensions to it in five different uh, angles and everything and then put it out on the mill and the lathe and, and prototype it all day and have a team full of people building jigs and shit like that. We don't have to do that anymore. Okay, one of these kids, 18, 19, 20 years old, with basic CAD software that can measure, okay, that has the, a good direction and a 3D printer, you can get a model right in front of you. And honestly, we were able to throw more or less a working prototype of a firearm together that does not currently exist completely new concept. We called it together in about six, seven days. And I honestly think that's probably why the industry is where it is. There's a lot of cynical people in the industry and, and really it's, it's, it's very hard to describe. This probably doesn't make a lot of sense to people that aren't involved in it, but people who are will know exactly what I mean. But I really do believe that's because big companies are full of people in the prototyping department, any department, that aren't focused on making new stuff. They're not focused on production. They're not focused on any of that stuff. And this is not all, all gun companies. This is just the big corporate ones, uh, at least a good chunk of them, that just have a bunch of people filling positions that are only there for a salary, and they're there to advance their career because they really want to work at X company over there. That is a fucking plague in the gun industry right now. And I got a lot of friends doing stuff like that. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with it, but for the future of a company, you can't have a staff that's doing that. This right here was a giant red flag to show what seven dedicated people can do when they have a solid, a founder, a vision, and just a good work ethic and a solid foundation of skills with n no real college degrees with any of that stuff, n nothing fancy. These are not NASA engineers, <laughs> you know, for the people who get that joke, but this is these are the people that are willing to bust their ass just for a shot. And they're being overlooked. The amount of progress that we were able to make today, it's blowing my mind how many gun companies are not willing to jump into the 21st century. We have CAD, we have 3D printers, we have a lot of... It, it's, it is actually frustrating. I'm getting fucking pissed off right now because of how much waste is out there. 
we are going to be further along in this project. If I continue working with these guys, we're going to be further along in this project in three or four weeks than most companies would be in months. Because you stay small, you stay to a dedicated crew of people who actually give a shit about what they're doing. They're doing it lean, they're doing it efficiently. We're going to have one fiftieth of the budget, a quarter of the time, to do twice the shit. And that's the message. And this is not special. This is not something that I'm doing that's special about me. I'm a fuck up. Alright? <laughs> you wanna know anything fucking bad about me, just Google me. It's it's really not that fucking hard. I'm not special at all. This is something that everybody can be doing, but nobody is. And that's what's pissing me off. Because people like this, they really do deserve a chance. And I think it would not only benefit them, but I think it would benefit a lot of gun companies too to kind of reevaluate the way they choose their people, the way they choose to do their projects. And without me ranting all night, I think what we're doing here is very, very important. So we've just wrapped the first ever Brass Valley, and I would consider it a resounding success. Not for me, because at the end of the day, I don't matter. But I think if we're able to do what I want to do with this, these guys are going to have a fantastic future ahead of them if that's what they choose. And I think a lot of other guys will in future Brass Valleys and in gun companies that choose to take this as a message to find guys who have the right spirit instead of the right credentials on a piece of paper. So to wrap all of this all up, if you're still here through that rambling bit, hopefully this made sense to you. I'm excited to look back on this and see where Brass Valley is in a year, two, three years. Hopefully I'm still around, we'll see what happens, but this is going to be a fun project and I'm excited to see how you guys respond to some of the stuff that we've done here. Because we've had a fantastic time, we've done a lot of good stuff, I'm excited to release some of that stuff to you. For, I know why you guys, I know what you guys care about. Yes, we did work on AK-50 stuff, okay, we're still coming along with that. Project Huracan is well underway, I'm excited for the future of that. And we're just going to have a lot of very, very cool things coming to you guys soon. So, thank you guys so much for bearing with us for some, you know, a couple of kind of random videos as we kind of just stumble-fucked our way through the Brass Valley content uh, drought. But I appreciate you guys staying with. I appreciate the fucking hashtag AKG notification squad. And as always, avoid, uh, avoid my Discord. And I will see you sexy YouTube motherfuckers in the next video. Thank you. What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? Uh, let me do that one more time because I fucking stumbled right out of the gate. I just said I was going to do this in a solid roll. That did not fucking happen.